I'm not sure if cooking over the fire is considered to be a homesteading skill, but regardless, today I'm going to show you how I cook things in a cast iron over the fire. We've been living in an RV for seven months, and if you've ever cooked in a small RV, you will know that it's pretty challenging to cook large meals in such a tiny space. I'll show you our space in a little bit, but for now, I want to get this fire started. It did start sprinkling. There's not rain on the forecast, but I want to make sure that I get some heat here, get this fire started, and then I'll take you inside to show you our space and get some of the food prepped. Now this will be probably like my 10th time cooking in a cast iron over the fire. In the past I've always cooked slow cook meals so it's always been something like pot roast or ham and those things seem to do really well over the fire. Today I am making a casserole. This is gonna be an experiment for me. It's not something that I've tried before but I'm looking for a meal that is quick and easy for me to prepare. Pot roast is quick and easy as well, but we have been eating that so much lately that I wanted to switch it up. So we're gonna be making tater tot casserole and we're gonna see how this goes. Our property is full of these rocks here. We have so many of them and some of them are extremely large. We actually failed our septic test the first time because as they were digging the hole for the septic test, we found a rock the size of a twin mattress. So we failed directly on the spot for that. Luckily they gave us a second chance. But that's where all these rocks are from. I have one side where I keep the fire and then this is the side where I'm gonna put the hot coals and then put the cast iron on to actually do the cooking portion. We've had a lot of rain here recently so I'm hoping that it's not too hard for me to start a fire. I did bring out some wood scraps from our house build to use to help me get started because those are extremely dry. I'll only be using the pine scraps. I won't be using anything that is pressure treated or potentially has any sort of resin in it or paint on it, just the pine scraps that we have. So we have some that are pretty small and I think that will help me get this started. Luckily, there's no shortage of sticks on a wooded property. Well, I have the fire started. It took me a lot longer than I was hoping, but now while this burns, I'm gonna go get all of the food ready. We do have limited space inside the camper, but there's this little area beneath that actually stores a decent amount of stuff. And this is where we keep some of the cooking appliances. We have a steamer and then this huge cast iron. It's just easier to store it down here and get it out when we use it. This cast iron is called the Lodge Cook-It-All. It's called the Cook-It-All because there's multiple uses for it. You have a grill on one side, a griddle on the other side, and then when you put this on the base, you then have a Dutch oven. And you can also just use the bottom to saute stuff as well. So I'm gonna be using this as a Dutch oven to cook my casserole in. The first thing I have to do is brown my ground beef to cook it. So I am gonna try, I might try to do this over the fire. I have a little stand thing that I can put this on. I've never tried it. So let me grab that and see how that's gonna work. I've never tried this before. This is brand new to me. It's called the Fire and Cook Stand. It's also made by Lodge. And you can see it's still in the plastic. So clearly I've never used it, but I got it for this exact situation when I want to saute something or brown some meat before actually cooking it in the Dutch oven. So I'm gonna put this together real quick and then looks like I'm gonna need some scissors. Oh no, I think I can get this off. Put this together real quick and then we'll see if I decide I wanna use it. I'm down to the last few nuts here. There's like these little washers that go on and then these nuts. I'm loosely screwing on all of the nuts and just hand tightening them first and then they gave you a little wrench to tighten everything up. The moment of truth. Will this hold this huge cast iron? That's really heavy. Oh, that fits nice. That holds that really nice. Okay, cool. Looks like I'm gonna brown our beef in this cast iron. This recipe is pretty simple. I need some ground beef, cream of mushroom soup, 
corn, and tater tots. So it's really simple. It's probably not the healthiest recipe, but it works, it tastes delicious, and whenever we are focused primarily on our house build and some of our other homesteading things, this is the kind of recipe that we like to make. Real quick, I'll show you our cooking space. You can see that we really have zero countertop space, which makes it really challenging to do a lot of cooking. It's easy for us to make things like eggs or pasta because we're really only using one burner. But when you have multiple ingredients and something that you're cooking that's a little bit more complex, this space gets really small really fast. We also like to use our instant pot in that steamer I showed you earlier, but ultimately I enjoy cooking outside a lot better than in here because it's just a really tight space. All right, so my fire has died down quite a bit. So I'm gonna see if I can get this sparked back up a bit. And then, let's see. Okay. So, now I'm gonna put this lodge cast iron thing here, which there we go, that's pretty sturdy. I think that's how I'm supposed to do it. I guess we'll find out. And then let's put this cast iron in here. Let's see if that's gonna get hot enough. It doesn't look like it's going to be hot enough. Like I said, this is my first time doing it. So no judgments if this doesn't work. I'm typically just cooking on the hot coals, which works pretty well for me. Okay, I've got to get this fire going a bit more. Get up there. Okay, I need some more wood. A lot of the stuff I have is just so small and it's really wet. All right, now we're cooking. That's definitely really hot and honestly, probably a little bit too hot. So I might need to get a stick in there and move some of the, that lumber out because I feel like I need it at like the perfect amount of fire because I don't want to get too close to that. definitely gonna cook pretty quick. Let's see how this goes. Yikes. <laughs> this setup is working so well. I'm definitely gonna use this if I ever wanna saute something over the fire again, because I can stay away from the heat, but it cooks the meat. <laughs> this specific recipe calls for two pounds or two and a half pounds of ground beef. I have two pounds in here. Now, I don't remember all of the instructions, but I'm just gonna go with it. So now I think I mix in the corn, and the cream of mushroom soup and then I put the tater tots on top and then that's what I'm going to put it on the coals. So when I do this, um, I'm supposed to be using a certain amount of frozen corn. I have a tendency to follow recipes loosely and basically adjust them based on what I already have. So we had some frozen corn and a can of regular corn. I'm gonna mix all of that in here. We also have a can of peas, which I have no plans to use anytime in the near future. So I'm gonna throw those in here as well. And then we'll mix all that together, cream of mushroom soup, throw those tater tots on top and put it on the coals and let it kind of simmer and cook some more. So we'll see how this turns out. The coals this is currently sitting on are not hot. So this isn't gonna cook it anymore. But like I said, I'm just gonna wing it here because that's what I like to do. I know some people 
really like following recipes to tea, but that's just not me. I don't think this spoon's gonna fit in there. Oh, I need to drain that first. I think I'm gonna add another can of cream of mushroom soup. And then I currently only have one big bag of tater tots out here. I'm gonna go grab a second because I think I'm gonna be able to cover this whole entire thing with tater tots. I'm back with a smaller spoon so I can get out all of this goodness. And then also I have another can of cream of mushroom soup, which is just lucky that I even have that. Put about half of this and see where that leaves us. Last thing I'm gonna do is put my tater tots in here. Maybe I only need one bag. I'm gonna put this lid on it. And now I just need to get coals underneath it and above it. Actually, I'm going to just put my whole thing right here where these coals already are because typically I'm trying to keep the fire hot and I keep it burning because I'm slow cooking something and there's a potential that I'll need more coals. But in this case, since I'm really only gonna put this on here for 25 minutes or whatever, we'll see how long it takes. Um, I'm just gonna put it where all these coals are. And the goal here is just to kind of warm it up and cook some of those tater tots. So let's see if this works. I might not have enough coals to put on top but life is an experiment and we're just gonna try. Now that that's on the fire, I will let it sit there for about 20 minutes. Nothing else really needs to be cooked per se in that Dutch oven. So all I'm really trying to do is heat up the tater tots and heat up everything as a whole. I would imagine that the tater tots are gonna turn more mushy than crunchy like you would get in the oven. Maybe with having some of the coals on top, it will make them crunchy. I'm not sure, I've never tried this before, so we're gonna see what happens together. All right, it's been about 20 minutes, give or take, maybe a little bit longer. Let's see how it's looking. Definitely some steam in there. Ooh, that looks good. Might have got a little bit burnt on the bottom, but I think we are done. These coals off the lid. this cool a bit. Ooh, nope, it did not burn on the bottom. And here is the finished product. You can see it's stuck to the bottom of the pan a little bit, but overall, it looks really good and was a lot easier to cook out here. Now that the cast iron has had some time to cool, it's time to clean it, dry it, and then re-season it. You can use soap if you want to with a cast iron. I typically do not. I'm actually gonna be taking it into the garage to clean it because the sink in the RV is just way too small and I don't even think I could fit this in there. We put in a small half bath in the garage and it has a huge utility sink and it's perfect for an application like this where I'm cleaning something that's extremely large. This is the downstairs half bath. We are living in a construction zone here, so there is clearly no door, so we put these curtains up here, and then only a portion of the wall is drywall just because we wanted to put in the toilet in the sink. And I don't know if you can tell, but this sink is really large. If you look at the cast iron, it takes up a large portion of this sink. The reason why we got something this big is because we wanted to be able to wash Georgie in it. Georgie's about 30 pounds, and he fits really comfortably in this and it works out perfect. 
We also know that we'll probably be doing some gardening and homesteading tasks in this big sink since it's easily accessible from the garage. So we didn't want to put anything super nice in, but we are planning to spruce it up a little bit and kind of put in some fake cabinetry here and then maybe put some doors and storage beneath it. But that's down the road once we are actually moved into the house. It's really important to season your cast iron pan because it adds a layer of protection and helps it last for generations. I initially was really intimidated with cooking with a cast iron until I tried it. I don't know why I was so intimidated, but I think it was because of the cleaning and maintaining process. But if you watch a few videos on it, it's really actually pretty straightforward. You probably noticed in my recipe that I used a lot of canned goods purchased from the store. We are in a stage of life right now where we're primarily focused on growing fresh food foods and not so much preserving. We just don't have the bandwidth with everything that we have going on building our house. And so we are planning to do that eventually, but just right now is not that time. And that is totally okay. We've preserved some things in the past. We've done tomatoes, a lot of salsa and pickles, but I definitely want to venture into the pressure canning realm, hopefully in the next year or so. I'm very intrigued by pressure canning and it's something that is on the top of my list to do. What I like to do in the meantime is I like to take note of some of the vegetables that I'm using in my recipes that we could eventually grow to preserve. So for example in this recipe we could grow corn and peas and preserve those. We could do that by freezing them or pressure canning them. We honestly don't eat a ton of sweet corn or peas so I'd probably only grow enough for fresh eating and then a little bit of excess for preserving. It's really good to start thinking about what you use in your recipes each week and how that relates to what you would want to grow in your garden and how much you need to grow in your garden. This is really useful to know in advance because then you can kind of plan for how many plants that you'll need. I'm not sure if I could make cream of mushroom soup and preserve that and then use that in recipes recipes. We do use that in several recipes so that would be a really good one for us to do and since we are currently experimenting with growing mushrooms that would be a really good thing to try. I know that you can make cream of mushroom soup from scratch. I just don't know how you preserve it. I'm guessing you use a pressure canner or you could potentially freeze it. I'll have to do some more research on that but if you're familiar with canning cream of mushroom soup definitely let me know. Also if you have any Dutch oven recipes or just recipes in general that you think would be delicious over the fire, leave a comment below and let me know because I'm always looking for new things to try and experiment with. I've cooked some basic things like pot roast, ham, and fajitas. It's always fun to hear some of the things that people suggest. Some of the things that are on the top of my list to try are pizza. I want to do some breakfast foods like pancakes and eggs. And then I also would love to try to do some type of baked good. And I'm thinking cornbread would be a really good option to start with. Talking about growing and preserving food, Food gets me really excited for the 2024 growing season. We still have yet to order all of our seeds. We typically try to order them in December, but I'm a little bit behind and I will get them on order probably within the next two weeks. We have several things that we need to get started right away. So the sooner I get those seeds on order, the sooner I can start planting and preparing for the 2024 growing season. Thanks so much for joining me on this little experimental cooking journey and I'll see you soon.